Welcome to 3 Minutes with Arc 2. I am a radiological scientific officer, and this is our nuclear survival complex. Next to a survival shelter, one of the most important things to have is potassium iodide or potassium iodate. As a matter of fact, if you're not in the direct line of fallout from a nuclear weapon, or are some distance away, hundreds of miles away, that may be all that you need. Because of wide dispersal of fallout, otherwise low levels of radiation will still contain the radioisotope iodine-131, to which children are particularly susceptible. While the iodine isotope has a relatively short half-life, it is extremely dangerous in the first couple of weeks and has a peculiar relationship to the human body that other radioisotopes do not. Whereas the other radioisotopes generally become more and more dispersed, biological processes concentrate radioactive iodine. Children get it concentrated from cow's milk and infants from their mother's milk. The human thyroid reconcentrates radioactive iodine from water, air, and other sources and causes goiter. This is a picture of an extreme case of goiter. A National Cancer Institute study estimated that the U.S. Nevada atmospheric nuclear bomb tests likely generated from 10,000 to 75,000 cases of thyroid cancer, principally in the red-shaded states. In the Chernobyl event, there were so many tens of thousands of thyroid cases that occurred in neighboring areas and countries that the required operations to remove the goiters left what became known as the Chernobyl necklace. Here you see the telltale line about these women's necks. Women and children are more susceptible than men. The younger the child, the more detrimental it is. And this includes children in the womb. Sometimes in villages related to the Chernobyl event, every child in the village was affected. Radioactive iodine not only causes thyroid cancer in children, but also many other illnesses, such as mental retardation. The problem that we face is that while these pictures are of peacetime accidents or events, in the event of nuclear World War III, there will be no medical facilities available to perform the hundreds of thousands or millions of operations that would be necessary. All this is easily preventable by just taking potassium iodide or potassium iodate pills. One should not take fallout pills unless there is an immediate threat of fallout. Let me repeat, one should not take fallout pills unless there is an immediate threat of fallout but then it is essential to take them at least an hour before the fallout actually arrives. Fallout pills are not a cure. They are only a preventative. If you have already absorbed the radioactive iodine and has saturated your thyroid, the pills will not displace it. It is too late to take them. For the first 10 days after a nuclear event, it is necessary to take potassium iodide or potassium iodate, but they should not be used otherwise except under the direction of a physician. The lethal dose of free iodine for an adult human is 2 to 3 grams, which is less than what is contained in 2 fluid ounces of 5% Lugol solution. You need to take the pills for only 7 to 10 days after a nuclear event that is going to affect you because the radiation decays very rapidly. 
dosages are divided up differently by different manufacturers. But the key point is that younger persons are to get only partial dosages. When giving pills, children require only a fraction of the amount that is given to adults. The dosages for both adults and children also differ between potassium iodide and potassium iodate. Here is how a fallout pill works. The iodine it contains is absorbed by the thyroid. The thyroid will, however, absorb only so much iodine and become saturated. When the radioactive fallout that arrives in air to be breathed or water that is drank or used to wash or cook vegetables, then the iodine from those sources is simply eliminated in the urine because the thyroid is already saturated. With this all being said, it is very important that you understand the difference between peacetime and wartime threats. I heard all the hysteria about Fukushima. I heard it again and again repeatedly. The numbers seemed frightening to people because they didn't understand the measurements, which seemed large but were often just parts in a billion. The danger to people in the USA was, and is, totally insignificant because the Fukushima radiation occurred in Japan at ground level. The effects of a nuclear war in that same area could be entirely different for the US because the radiation would be carried by explosions into the high atmosphere and could be quickly carried to North America by the jet streams where they would fall out here. Nuclear weapons falling in North America would have much more detrimental effect. Elsewhere I talk about providing shelter from local gamma radiation, but the radioactive iodine could spread most anywhere. If you have not stocked potassium iodide or potassium iodate pills, it is possible to apply iodine directly to the skin. Just paint it on like they do for surgeries. But do so for 10 days whenever it starts to fade. Iodine for painting on the skin is available under numbers of brand names, such as ovidone iodine, and betadine, and your local or online pharmacist should be able to provide you with a supply. It can be painted on the forearms or abdomen or for infants on the soles of their feet, which is about the only way to protect them. Potassium iodide and potassium iodate pills and painted on an iodine are probably all about equally effective. The potassium iodide is the FDA-endorsed formula. What is totally ineffective are natural foods like kelp. While these contain iodine, it is so little that it's not better than nothing. There is potassium iodide and iodized salt, but again so little that you would die of salt poisoning long before you got enough iodine to protect you from the iodine-131 isotope. There is one other subject that I will briefly mention, and that is about Prussian blue. You may hear a lot about this preventive or remedial fallout pill for other types of radiation. For all practical purposes, it doesn't exist. It may have been approved by the FDA the hurdles are so high that it's not getting out to the public. In truth, it is not all that magically effective, and there's not going to be the expertise to administer it, even in those lesser situations where it might have some benefit. The defenses that you need are shelter and potassium iodide or iodate pills. Okay. Well, thank you for watching, and please remember that art too is not just about your survival.
It is about the reconstruction of society after its collapse or a nuclear war.